Welcome to today's podcast, where I'm joined by um, Mr. Gary Wilson. Hello. Woo! Oh, Jack, give me a fright here, lad. Uh, sorry. Um, that, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, for anyone who doesn't know Gary, he is the guy behind GetMeLinks.com. He's also the guy that acquired BFYLinks.com from Charles Float. Um, <coughs> and he is basically the... the Go to guy for links for anyone who is looking for links. So, Gary, thank you for coming on. You're so good, man. Anytime. You have <coughs> recently, probably in the last year, really got well known for this guest posting service you've got. Yeah, I know you've had various different names, boner links, and <laughs> all sorts yes. of uh, crazy stuff, and you know whatever. You've now got get me links, which is I'm assuming going to be the brand going forward. Yeah. Uh, and you have acquired DFY Link, so <coughs> it's quite a lot to happen in the last twelve months, eighteen months, or whatever it's going to be. Going from maybe doing client work into to focusing yeah. on that. Um, so how how has been the transition from getting DFY links? Because I've obviously seen online people are saying I've not had my order for two three months and yeah. all that stuff, and I know you've been bogged down with support tickets and all that shit. For um, sure. Which obviously happens um, just the way it goes, but is that all sorted now? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there's, there's still a few people that were working that got in touch with us more recently, but um, yeah, for sure, like the majority, like the majority of people have been sorted out now. And if anyone still is wait, waiting for a refund or looking for links, then they can reach out and we'll definitely sort them out. But you've got that obviously the the brand that Charles built up for you know the year or two prior to that is obviously proved to be a massive success for your business and stuff like that for sure um, obviously you were starting out and i know you had multiple vas and everything else you know doing certain aspects of the job outreach or whatever yeah and um, how has buying dfi links resulted in terms of your staff if you had to increase staff yeah what, you know what sort of impacts that had in your business for sure so that's the question a lot of asked. so it's essentially because i was already working with dfy before so before i even acquired the company i was actually already working with them then mm -hmm. doing the majority of the guest post fulfillment so in terms of the demand for links it didn't really change so my staffing behind it didn't really have to change much like i was able to deal with it because i'd previously dealt with that sort of demand for a year the only thing we sort of had to start to implement was niche edits which we um, has been a bit of a challenge for the last couple of months but um yeah that's that's really been it the guest post has been fine guest posts are the key to to ranking so for anyone who's like this is just another link seller um you know you know where are the links coming from and stuff like that and um, you know can you tell us a bit about the process involved in how you get your guest posts because obviously there's guys in fiverr selling guest posts there's guys in people per hour selling guest posts for sure yeah. what you know what is the difference between yours and those for sure so um, one of the one of the main things that we do that um, not many outreach companies do or a lot of these services in Fiverr or people are don't do um, is actual outreach. So um, we use a tool called Pitchbox. Um, so when an order is placed, um, most of the time we essentially go out and find sites at the point of order. So it means essentially we're finding fresher sites that less people are placing on. We're essentially scraping Google for prospects and then reaching to them at the start of the order. That, so that means that um, there's going to be a bit of time for us to negotiate with that person and get the link placed. But it means that you're essentially getting fresher sites that are not the commonly one, commonly used ones, essentially, that all these people are placing on, which you're probably going to get in like five or people per hour and et cetera. Yeah. Uh, no, I think obviously I've used your services anyway. And I think that's the point that people you need to hit home is the fact that these are not the same websites that you know, every Tom, Dick and Harry's on. The, on yeah. the whole point of outreach is to get fresh. Right websites that are not spam to death and obviously <coughs> people say why does gary's move the needle and you know maybe that other person's doesn't or yeah. um you know why does gary's cost this and that other person's doing it for a lot less or whatever for i think sure. you've obviously got to hammer home the quality um <coughs> side of things because you know there's, there's websites out there selling hundreds of thousands of links per day yeah um, <laughs> which is which is unfortunate yeah but in terms of um you know going forward um you you've you used to do guest posts and nothing else yep. you've now got this tiered you know niche edits and you've got your, your tier two stuff and all that kind of stuff going sure. on yeah and um, people are, are always going to ask you know what is a niche edit what you know what's involved with that 
how does it benefit them? Mm -hmm. And also, if you can tell us a bit about the kind of tiered thing, what's the benefit of me buying? I'm just going to use one link as an example. Yep. If I buy one link, why would I want a tier two or anything? What, sure. What's the benefit? Yeah, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll touch on niche edits first. So niche edits are essentially, <laughs> um, we do the same process with them as uh, guest posts. Um, there's a lot of guys who sell niche edits who are just like hack links. Um, that's not something we do. We actually do outreach for them. Um, so they're slightly more expensive than some of the other vendors and maybe for that reason. Um, but essentially, all we're doing is instead of actually placing an article on the website, we're just placing a link on an existing article. So um, you're still going to get good relevance with doing these edits, but it's not going to be as good as a guest post because we're not writing the article specific mm -hmm. to the client. But it's usually going to be on an age page. Sometimes those pages will actually have tiered links going to them mm -hmm. um, because we're placing on an existing page. Um, and with regards to tiered links, tiered, tiered links is something that I've certainly been doing a lot with my own affiliate sites. Um, essentially, what you're doing is you're just powering up um, behind your site with almost lower quality links that you wouldn't, less relevant, less quality links that you wouldn't normally send to your website, but it's still passing power signals through. Mm -hmm. So through that link, Google's essentially going to, you know, power is going to pass to that link and it's going to pass straight through to your website. So you can be a bit more lenient, um, just to say the least, with what you're sending at a tiered level because mm -hmm. it's not going directly to your money site. Um, relevance isn't really important at that level, but you're really just looking at power um, is the main thing there. Yeah, no, I think it makes sense to power up a guest post or For sure. whatever it may be, give it a little bit more Absolutely. gas, if you like. Um, so it's a good option to have. I'm assuming without <coughs> having access to the front of your website just now, the cost of the lower quality tier two stuff is not the same as a guest post. No, absolutely not. Like much cheaper, yeah. Much cheaper. Yeah. Um, what's to stop someone just getting a whole bunch of tier two like, to their money website? Like, mm -hmm. Why would you not do you, that? You could absolutely do that, but um, there's no... <coughs> They're, they're, it's essentially what we're placing with, with the tier twos is niche edit placements. Mm -hmm. So we're essentially placing links on existing web pages and those web pages are completely random pages with random anchors. So there's not going to be um, any sort of um, look into uh, relevance at all, right? Mm -hmm. um, so sending it straight to your money site, if you're in a very, very really low competitive niche, a few of them would probably hurt you might just pass a bit of juice to be honest with you but i would really just not recommend to anyone because there's no relevance there at all yeah. it's just not going to help um and if anything it's probably going to hurt you because um sending lots of lots of different types of links but lots of different random things as we all know is not going to um, do good for your website good man good man um so going forward um is there anything else that you plan on implementing you know you obviously you've, you've had your guest posts you've had your um Niche edits, and you've now got the tiered right. links. Such a, is there something else out there that's new, like yeah. that we don't know about yet that you're maybe testing? For sure. So there's um the, the, the those products that talk about guest posts and tiered links. Those are the main products that sell um at the moment. It's the main ones that are working right now. It's the main ones that people are, are using at scale. Um, but what we what we're looking into doing um is doing some foreign links potentially in the future. So there's a lot of demand for people in Germany, Sweden. All over the world to buy links so we're working hard just now to try and essentially take our outreach process and apply that to the foreign service mm -hmm. the difficulty is obviously the language barrier and negotiate with websites to get great deals there um, and also there's just less websites to place on which mm -hmm. makes it a little bit harder as well because these countries are a little bit behind on, the, on that whole world of things and um, so that's one side of it and the other thing and um, which is just going to be huge for, for for anyone working with us we want to we want to try and offer people more assistance with um with that their actual campaigns. I already spend a lot of time with some with some of the most customers I've got, um. But but essentially, I want to I want to maybe add an audit service or different things like that, mm -hmm. which is going to um help people build a better plan for their links, yeah. and get the most bang for the buck essentially. Because um, there's a lot of people out there. There's I work for a lot of SEOs who really do know what they're doing, but. And um, there's a lot of people out there who just have businesses that don't know a lot of SEO and want some form of advice and consultation and what, yeah. where to send the links and what to do with it. Um, and I want to give people a bit of help with that as well. No, I think I think that would sell well because, as you say, there's a lot of guys out there who probably hear that link building's the the, the thing to do, or, or maybe hear that you know the name Gary or something. For sure. Reach out to you and just buy a whole bunch of shit. Absolutely. And, and don't really um, know what, what they're buying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So even like a consult call or something like that, just sure. to say, right, <coughs> explain this shit, you know, a bit better to me or yep. what do I need to be doing? Or 
you know, if I pay, I mean, is it an option if someone pays you a bit extra, you can just figure it out for them? Yeah, so I mean, we, we actually pick anchors normally on orders over $1,500 that we do that as a service if, if the customer wants it. But I do actually spend a lot of time on calls with people just chatting and helping them out if they've got questions. And um, usually it's people with larger campaigns that need help with, on, on a broader scale and people who don't really understand SEO as well, maybe that mm-hmm. want to. Um, Is that paid call? No, n- normally if it's if it's somebody who's buying links, I'll I'll jump on a call with them for free. But I'm, I'm assuming looking... it's not one link though. If I'm more than one, yeah, link. no, it's, I'm not gonna. <laughs> um, but usually it's something I do as a kind gesture to help people. But what I want to do is systemize that process a lot more. And um, there's a lot of people that want my time to help them with their campaigns now. So what I want to do is take a lot of that knowledge and apply it into an audit service where I can spend less time with them, but still give them as much or more information. Um, that would have came from me anyway. Because yeah. a lot of the time we're just talking about the same things. Here's the competition. Here's how many links you need to beat that. And it's the same same process for everyone. So I just want to create a sort of an audit service probably to systemize that and make that a wee bit easier for people. Yeah. No, interesting how you're trying to to obviously improve the quality of the service and yep. systemize it. I think when you're dealing and obviously you've acquired another uh, business, um, <coughs> you know, you're going to have to start to systemize things to, for sure. to be able to continue to scale up. Yep. I mean, what what is your typical... Um, client list like is it is it seos is it agencies is it a whole mix of everyone yeah who is your typical audience it's, it's a mix of people to be honest usually in three brackets it'll either be um a large a large mm-hmm. company um so we look at like insurance provider and um, or like finance provider for some some sort of finance thing um it'll either be that or like a big gambling site so I can at least be on it. will probably be other than that, maybe like big affiliate sites as well. Affiliate mm-hmm. site owners, um, very commonly, and um, will buy a lot of links. And um, one of the most common ones is agencies as well, who outsource a lot of their client budgets to us as well. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that's the main free categories, but there really is a just a mix of lots of different people that need them for different reasons. And something I want to emphasize, just for anyone listening, um. <laughs> Because there's a, a process a process and a system and everything else in place, yeah. your links take three to four weeks Correct, yeah. to uh, you know, from someone ordering to them getting their um, link report back. Um, you know, <coughs> I know people out there, I know that's common sense, you know, for people who buy links, they understand it. But for anyone listening, obviously I just want to highlight the fact that, you know, there's got to be that outreach process, there's got to be content created for the sure. guest posts and you know, you've got to wait the guy replying or, you know, adding it to the website or approving the content. Um, and that's why it takes three to four weeks, sure. um, which I think a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the biggest challenge. And three to four weeks is a delivery estimate for campaigns. And the I think the thing that people sometimes forget is that we're not just pulling sites off a list all the time. Some sites we will reuse. It'll just mm-hmm. naturally happen. It's a great site. But most of the time, especially for orders over a couple of links, we are doing the outreach on that point. And we're, when you're doing that, you're dealing with other people. And when you're dealing with other people, it's not always going to happen perfectly on your time scale, you know. But I'm trying, I'm trying my very best all the time to get that time down as much as possible. There's just there's going to be a certain level as to where we just can't get it further down because we're going to, we're dealing with other sites, we're waiting for replies, and we're negotiating deals on your behalf essentially to yeah. get you great links placed at a good price. Um. So. All you know, you're doing your links, and that's all good and well. It's obviously very successful. There's loads of case studies out there of people using your service and seeing great results. Yeah. Um. You know what what happens? Um. You know, if someone comes to you and you do that consult call, and the the person's website dog shit, you know, it's fucking technical problems right. or the content's duplicate or whatever. Yeah. Are you you know is that something you're quite comfortable stepping into? And, and helping them with that side of things. Yeah. Or, you know, obviously there's only so far your goodwill can go Absolutely, um, yeah. in terms of sharing stuff, but are you prepared to go to that length to help these guys so that you continue to get the link order? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think, where, where, where is the break-off point where you, you know... For have- sure. So this, this is actually one of the biggest challenges that I'm dealing with at the moment because um, I've always had a tendency just to help people as much as I possibly can, but... The issue with that is you can sometimes end up helping one person too much and then three other people don't get the help that they deserve. Um, so that's why I'm looking into doing the systemization yeah. and different things. Um, with On an on-page site, usually I'll offer up some very basic on-page tips. So mm-hmm. as you know, some of the main things, title tag, cage tags, different things like that. But if a website, if it's clearly got crawling issues or it's got too much dummy content on there or whatever, um, 
normally what I'll do is I'll refer them to someone else and say, hey, before you go and spend 40,000 on links, and you might want to address this, <laughs> <laughs> these issues here as well, because that's going to help you out a lot, you know. So it's usually case by case. I'm not going to sit and obviously do tech audits for people. I wouldn't really call myself a technical SEO anyway, um, mm -hmm. but... I, I know that you call yourself an SEO so it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, but basically, um, I would usually refer those people on to someone um, that's more specialist in that area. No, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so all that you know, that's all good and well. But how are you actively scaling that business and getting more customers? Because obviously, you go to conferences. You, yeah. you know, you've done your Brighton SEO leaflets, which. Uh, Quite a funny story, actually. I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> he had a picture of a shit like "Don't buy." Yeah. It was a picture of sh a actual shit saying "Don't buy shit links." Come to me. We can maybe put the image um, up, like right here. So if you were ever at Brighton and you would seen that kind of purple flyer with a picture of a shit on it, that was <laughs> yeah, it. it was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, obviously, you've tried different things, um, and I want to talk to you a bit about. You know, I think you're doing some good stuff um, with a. Uh, Facebook ads. That's correct. Um, yeah, we are. And uh, you've also got testimonials from a couple of different guys. And uh, yeah. is mine still performing the best? <laughs> yeah, so we had this um, argument. Um, it's Craig and a uh, guy called James Dooley. And um, there was different ad sets, essentially. Um, I'm not going to tell the details, but Craig's was performing better than some of them. And James was performing better than some of them. So I was saying, who's the best SEO? And I was playing them both against each other. And he was saying... Oh, it has to be me. I'm the best SEO. But I will say, if we're just looking at numbers and what it's generated, Craig's has at the moment generated the most money. And the lowest and cost, lowest cost yeah, yeah, so, the lowest profit. Yeah. Um, I have actually physically seen that with my own eyes. Um, <laughs> although James Dooley has phoned me and told me on multiple occasions <laughs> it was him, um, I'm the winner. Um, sadly, James so. won't agree, but um, uh, <laughs> James is never going to agree. Um, we've got this kind of love hate relationship where we yeah. want to beat each other, and uh, but sadly, I've won this one, James. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> but no, you know, te in terms of ongoing promotion, if someone else, uh, <coughs> you know, goes into business, um, and you know, whether it's a link service, whether it's an audit service, it really doesn't matter. Um, what tips can you give to people? So you're obviously you've done this very recently. I, I've been in the business for a long time, and kind of right. my reputation kind of helps me get help you yeah. business. Um, but obviously you didn't have, yeah. you know that. So you've had to look at Facebook. You've had to, uh, you know, maybe you know use friends or whatever to recommendations and stuff like that. Yeah. What advice would you give to someone who's starting off? Like obviously you've had to. Um, and we had the conversation, you know, a few years back when I'm like, come to Brighton SEO, mm -hmm. you know, like, ah, nah, fuck that shit, it's, you know, crap down there, and yeah. uh, I'm not going to get much value, um, <coughs> you know, and obviously we all, we've all had that in our head, like, is it worth the punt going to these things? Yeah. You know, what would you say in terms of... You can spend a lot of money going on these trips, you know, pay for the conference, pay for the flights, you know, if you're starting out, it's, it was a, for me, it was a, quite a lot of the time, so, yeah. Um, but it pays off, right? For sure, um, yeah. And obviously... For other people starting, what other things have you felt that, that helped the most? Was it the Facebook ads? Was right. it the networking? Was it a combination of everything? You know, mm -hmm. what advice could you give to someone? Yeah, so I mean, I think the biggest thing I've learned <coughs> recently, um, and the reason why I can understand why the Facebook ads has done so well, I don't think it's so much the fact that I use Facebook ads that was the big bit. I think the biggest thing you've got to have is a good business, right? You've got to have great processes, great, um, just a great service that people want to buy. A great offer um, and something that just makes sense on a business level so um if you're if you're coming at a lot of people what they do is they have a crap business right mm -hmm. maybe they've got crap processes they can't keep clients they and um, they struggle to fulfill results the delivery times are you know five years and they lose customers all the time if you're trying to run ads to a business like that you're never going to do well because there's going to be another guy that's you know it's, it's a competition based system. You're you're gonna have another guy who's got slightly better processes than you, slightly better product than you, better, maybe a slightly better price than you, and he's just gonna beat you out every time. So um, I think number one before you think about any form of advertising, you need to really bootstrap and try and get your first few customers. So if we're talking about an SEO business here, conferences was fantastic for me because I was able to meet lots of people, I was able to make good real connections with people and it allowed me to build good client relationships and those good relationships allowed me to get feedback on what I was doing for them as well 
And with that feedback, I was able to adapt the processes, adapt the product um, over the space of a couple of years and get it really, really good, right? So now when I take advertising and put it on top of my business, it works really, really well because everything's systemized, everything's set up, everything runs efficiently and people at the end of the end of the day get a good product, right? Yeah. So, and that's that's the point. You need to you need to have the good business first mm -hmm. before advertising is going to work. And Facebook is working extremely well right now um, for us, but there's, I mean, I'm pretty sure that most traffic sources um, that can get us SEO traffic will do very well because um, as I say, it's a good business. So it's yeah. gonna it's gonna really work quite well over the place. Where does a guy though get good processes? <laughs> you yeah. know, how do you know your processes are shit? Uh -huh. Um, you know, how do you identify how did you identify like, you know, I'm doing this and it's garbage, you know what right. is it a place you go or yeah. did someone say something to you? How do you figure that out? For sure. Um I mean there was uh, the, the biggest part really came from a lot of the networking. Um, and you've you've helped me out a bit with a lot of things as well, Craig, to be honest. Um, and this guy called Mad Singers, um, is a management consultant. He was a good help. Who? Mad Singers. You don't know him. No, I can't. No, I do <laughs> He's know him. Great guy. Great guy. Yeah. Um, no, Mad Singers. Um, was great. Um, so this, essentially, the the way I got really good at systemizing process. I mean, it really comes first of all about looking at your numbers. If your margins suck, your gross margin on products suck. Um, maybe you're spending too much. I mean, process come in all forms of areas. It comes on a staff side, comes on a product fulfillment cost side. So there's lots of things that go into, you know, what costs come into you fulfilling a service. Um, and if your margin sucks, then essentially probably your processes can be optimized or are pretty bad, right? So um, that, that I first identified that, and then I went into psychoanalyze what was going on. So I actually did a, a, a post on Pitchbox recently which spoke about some of my staff processes that I optimized over the last year and how we've essentially, our staff cost for each link is about $5 now. So it's really, really cheap and it's leveraging obviously outsourcing um, to the Philippines and it's also leveraging um, just great backend systems with all sorts of crazy stuff going on in Google Sheets. Um, so yeah, so just lots and lots of small things over a long period of time, which has made a huge difference and probably allows me to get links five times cheaper on a staff mm -hmm. level than most other people are taking yeah. cheaper than other people. And that just comes from hard work, time, and understanding that the important areas to work on. A lot of people will try and systemize things as well that um that aren't aren't really systemizable. Like they'll maybe try to reduce a cost here from fifty quid to forty quid when they could take the other cost here from a hundred quid to twenty quid, right? Yeah. So you need to pick your battles as well and understand well it's maybe not worth me solving that problem right now because it's not losing me enough money. Yeah. I'm not losing enough. So you just need to be really smart about finances and business to be able to identify those areas. And then um, you can dive in and work on solutions. And that's something that I'm always going to be ongoing doing. I've got people working on me, just working on that specific thing as well. Yeah. So Mad Singles is the guy to go to for that kind of... Yeah, Mads, Mads is great. He helped me a lot. He, he, was, he was one of the guys that told me to start looking at um, just the cost per link on a staff level, which is yeah. something I hadn't even... Just a simple thing. Sometimes it takes little tricks like that to um, somebody to open your mind up to a new idea, which takes you down a path of, um, you know, understanding things a lot better and getting great results. Yeah, I think a lot of what Mad says um, is very simple, but until yeah. he says it, you don't think right. about it. Um, sure. yeah. You're like, man, I could, I, why am I not doing, sure. why am I not doing this? So, you know, I think sometimes it is good to have another set of eyes on your yeah. business. Um, especially from someone you can obviously trust. Yeah, um, that's why I love conferences as well and going to networking events because you're you're constantly speaking to other people that are in your shoes that have maybe dealt with something that you're about to deal with. So by talking to other people and going to these events, it's not like people who go just to sell things. It's just stupid. It's not the not the reason to go to conferences. You're there to make connections, to help other people, and to to get help back as well in areas that you need help with. Um, so on the conference thing and in terms of selling and and. You know all that stuff. Did yeah. you actually sell anything from those flyers where it had a picture of a shit Did, on? Did yeah, got a fair few guys. <laughs> because I remember standing outside and I think I was waiting to give someone their ticket yeah. or some something like that. I can't remember. I'm standing outside anyway. Yeah. And the uh, <coughs> I'm pretty sure ninety percent of the people I seen threw it in the bin. <laughs> um, they just yeah. looked absolutely disgusted. Just there was a few people that were disgusted um, by it, but. Did you get any abuse for it? Like, did anyone say like, "What a fucking arsehole no, you are"? No, I didn't. I didn't really get anything. To be fair, um, I mean, I think, I think the 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 truth is, you're you're in a very busy environment down there. There's a lot of other um services, and I think 
marketing one of the key areas you got to focus on is standing out um and i, I, I certainly a big shit i certainly surely. i certainly stood out whether it stood out for the right reasons i don't know but it did get some sales so it was what a worthwhile um task. So you got a return on investment i did get a return yeah. and obviously you were too tight and miserable to um pay for a stand or, or some form of advertising at brighton so yeah he paid some random person. <laughs> two random people. Two yeah. random people from Brighton <laughs> to hand out the leaflets. And just obviously the, the leaflets door. probably cost 50 bucks or something to yeah. put together. I paid, so. them, I paid those two guys 100 quid each, uh, 150 quid each for the day and then about 100 quid for the leaflets. So about 500 quid and I got every person at Brighton SEO leaflet in their hand. What but, I'm curious to know is like, so the past couple of Brightons, um, you know, Kirky, from citations builder i think was the first guy to do this right. trick um and then other people have jumped on board obviously the last one with the picture of the shit on it there was probably five or six guys handing out yeah. flyers yeah um but i dread to think uh what it's going to be like at the next break especially sure since we've just head. spoken about it here yeah <laughs> um, but yeah if you really want cheap advertising to all those people um it was a good idea if you were thinking outside the box yeah maybe a year or so ago to, yeah. to pay some random just hand out leaflets rather than pay the the five grand for the stand inside right um, so <laughs> that's what take guys like him do yeah. anyway um, i was the monthly paid for the stand inside once and uh, <laughs> never made one sale <laughs> but hey oh, that's the way it goes um but uh, you win some you lose some um so no i think uh you've done well over the the, the past uh, time obviously that i've seen you right. growing and stuff like that and hopefully that continues but for anyone who wants to find you or maybe talk to you or maybe come to you for advice, yep. uh, where's the best place to hold of you? Uh, just getmelinks.com. You'll get me on there. Just shoot in a support ticket. Ask for me and it'll get signed to me and I'll get back to you. Just ask for Gary. <laughs> That's it. Easy as that. Just bombard them. <laughs> Everyone watching. Um, <laughs> gives away free advice, free audits, a lot of that stuff. Sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much for coming on. I'm not going to shake your hand though. Yeah. Just in case you've got that virus. Yeah. So, um, we'll keep, yeah. We'll keep clear. yeah. Cheers. Thank you.